Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bolt City Podcast. Dave Palais, Josh Pele, Mario O'Haran. A lot going on today in the NFL and it's going to get even busier, guys, as we get towards the NFL draft. I want to start with something that happened just yesterday as we record this show, and that's that the New Orleans Saints have a new quarterback. Derek Carr is now a member of the Saints. That's the team he decided to choose. Uh, a lot of people thought it was up in the air. Was he going to go to the Jets? Was he going to go to the Panthers? Or was he going to go to where he had a comfort zone with a coach that understood him and go into the New Orleans Saints? From the outside, looking in, are you guys surprised at all that that was the destination for Carr? No. I thought Derek Carr to the Saints was actually a good fit. With that being said, that division sucks. And Derek Carr isn't very good. So them saying that Derek Carr going to the Saints makes them an automatic contender well, that's true. If you're talking about making the playoffs, you're definitely a contender. But that's it. The Derek Carr doesn't put you in position to make it to the big game. So I, I disagree with anybody that's saying that he pushes them over the top because they do have a lot of options on offense. He's just not very good. He's one of the most inaccurate quarterbacks in the league. So good for them for improving, but he's he's obviously not a top quarterback. I agree with Josh. I think it's an upgrade at QB. And you have a – if Michael Thomas – ever plays again or can play two games in a row you have a very talented receiving core and have a QB that can throw it to him I think their problem was more at head coach with Dennis Allen I think Dennis Allen's a good DC I don't think he's a good head coach I think we're just getting Carr yeah you'll probably win the division because it's terrible but you also that handcuffs you to a coach for another year because how are you going to let a guy go that keeps winning your division even though it's a crappy division so that part of it, I think if I'm a Saints fan, you're stuck in purgatory. And I guess, you know, have fun with the first round of bounces because that's like what you're what you're looking at going forward. And put on the eyeliner every Sunday, you know, support your guy, support your QB, taking snaps for you. See, I kind of agree with what you said right there, Mario, is that the Saints kind of put themselves in a worse position. Not only are you going to pay this guy a tremendous amount of money, and as Josh said, he's not an accurate passer. What he does is he puts you in a situation where, yeah, they should win the division next year because there's no one else in that division that's going to compete. So what that does is that gets you in the playoffs and it gets you a home playoff game to host. The problem is you don't get past the first round. So you become that team that makes it into the postseason but has zero chance of winning a championship. So what you become is you become the old Portland Trailblazers, as you say, right? You You aren't good enough to win the championship, but you aren't bad enough to get a good draft pick either. And you sit yourself right there in the middle, and then you don't move. And then you might sell season tickets and a couple jerseys the first year and everything else. But then you realize the goal is to win a Super Bowl, and the Saints aren't in a position to win a Super Bowl. And you're stuck with a coach that is the wrong guy. And you're stuck with a quarterback that is the wrong guy. And then you're going to look at the Saints again down the road in five years and go, well, what are we and what have we accomplished? And the answer is a couple playoff appearances and nothing else to show for it. That's not where you want to be. Carr's not that guy. I know all of us who follow the AFC West have watched Carr for years, and he's been nothing but a a huge disappointment. Even with all the talent the Raiders had last year, he was a terrible quarterback. Yeah, terrible quarterback with the NFL leading rusher. You had Darren Waller. He was hurt, but still you had Darren Waller. You had Hunter Renfro. He was hurt. Still an all-pro the season before. And then you had Devontae Adams, who was still the best wide receiver in the league. He had 24 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. That's not great. And he's going to have talent with the Saints. But at the same time, you have, and I believe it's $40 in dead cap before free agency starts if you're the New Orleans Saints. Congratulations. You're screwed. (laughs) You are screwed. (laughs) That franchise is such a mess. But as you just said, the whole division's a mess. What team in that division would say, we like where we're at right now? Nobody. Even the Falcons. Even if they did get Lamar Jackson, I don't think they're even in a position to be good right now. The whole division is awful. It's the worst division in the NFL. So Derek Carr, congratulations. You went to a spot where you can make the playoffs. But yeah, the franchise that the Saints are, you know, going back to the history of the New Orleans Saints from the very beginning, it's just a badly ran franchise. If it wasn't for uh, Drew Brees, who knows what the Saints would have been. Yeah, and the thing that pisses me off, and if I was a Saints fan who would send me over the edge, is like you said, they're going to have, what, $40 million in dead cap? Just tear it down. Just just tear it down. Like, it's, you know, Breeze and Peyton are gone. Don't try to hang on to something that's not there. Just, dude, take a bomb to it. Blow it Blow it the hell up. Like, send out Michael Thomas. Send out Kamara. Like, send out your assets and just restart. There's certain organizations that are so scared to restart 
when you get to that point of restart, Dave, if you mention it, you, be, you become the Portland Trailblazers. Okay, you know, you become the Indiana Pacers. You're, you're stuck in the middle. You know, that's where you get stuck in. It's like, don't be afraid to just go, wow, that was such a fun run with Sean Payton and Drew Brees. That was great. Okay, like we had Super Bowl, multiple playoff runs. That's great. Let's try to do it again. You're not going to do it again by like keep adding pieces that keep you mid and don't take you anything above mid. You know, you do that by adding pieces that will take you to the next spot or you invest in something young. Instead, you stay mid. It's just not a good idea. Just blow it up. Blow it the hell up. And now's a good time to do it. You could blow it up in that division, be competitive, and maybe you sneak into the playoffs. And then you give your young guys good playoff experience. But now you're just going to struggle in a very um, not good conference. And I don't know. You're going to struggle. It's not going to go well. At some point, it's going to go bad. So you look at teams that will sit there and take the step back before they take, you know, their five steps forward. And it happens in the NFL very fast. That's what's fantastic about the NFL. It is meant for you to turn it around in a hurry. If you're one of those teams that are struggling, there's no excuse for you, you to be able to turn it around in four to five years. And I mean, turn it around, I mean, being a Super Bowl team. And you look at the team that just lost the Super Bowl, the Philadelphia Eagles. They won a Super Bowl. They took major steps backwards. They rotated back around, boom, back in the Super Bowl. You know, that's the way it's designed to be. That's why if you're a Charger fan like us and you're going, God dang, man, how long is this going to take for us to figure out the combination? But the combination is that star quarterback and the the star coach. You need you need that together to work. And that star coach, I'm telling you, today's day and age, I say it almost every show, has to be an offensive-minded coach. It's what the league's designed for. And so when you look at the teams that have success, that's what they have in common. The teams that struggle, they don't have that in common. So... I, I want to go with uh, the the Titans. I know we got a bunch of stuff that we want to get through as far as the quarterbacks go and everything else. The Titans are doing that exactly right now. All right. Here's a team that had the number one seed in the AFC just two years ago. Okay. And the Titans fall apart. They lose like the last seven games and they fire their GM in the middle of the year. They fire their GM. They get a new GM. They really don't have a franchise quarterback in Ryan Tannehill. They have a franchise quarterback that lives in their city. And Aaron Rodgers, who's on the block right now, they have Derrick Henry. He's about the only guy that anyone would recognize off that entire roster. But yet the Titans are willing to do this to go. We aren't going to a Super Bowl winning team. So we got to put us in a position to do that. And more teams, in my opinion, should follow what the Titans are kind of doing. And we talked about this on the show a month ago that we all thought Derrick Henry was on the trading block. And now you're hearing reports. Hey, Derrick Henry's on the trading block that they're looking to basically revamp an entire franchise. You can't be afraid to take a step back, especially if you're in a situation with a new GM to say it's going to buy you some time. Nobody expects a first-year GM to be fired. The fan base doesn't. Ownership doesn't. It buys you time to figure it. You just have to try and make the right moves. And so for me, that is a franchise that is doing exactly, Mario, what you were kind of alluding to right there. And you're right there in Indianapolis where you're getting a firsthand look at that division closely with what the Colts are doing and the Jags have become the elite team and the Texans trying to revamp that right now, what is the right position? And that goes back to the Chargers. And when we said, do you get rid of your head coach because he's a defensive guy? Do you get rid of your GM because he's had the job for 10 years and hasn't been able to get the team in the Super Bowl? What is the right move for you know the Chargers in this situation? Are the Chargers basically spinning their wheels uh, with what they have with Justin Herbert not surrounding with the right personnel in front of them? Okay, let's go back to the Titans. I give them credit for trying to rebuild when you realize you don't have the pieces. If you have a head coach in there that everybody respects, he's one of the best head coaches in the league, but your team is not very good. Go for it when you have the new GM in and trade Derrick Henry while you can still get some value out of him. That offensive line stinks with the Titans. He's not going to put up the numbers that you'd expect out of Derrick Henry, but you still know that there's tread on the tires. I would trade him away to the Bills or the Eagles or whatever team's looking for a running back and get pieces in return. If you're the Chargers, the question for me is, do you try to build through the draft or do you try to build through trades with proven players? And you've seen it recently where people have tried to build through trades. And I kind of, I kind of like that idea because you know what you're going to get. And then with the draft, you really don't know what you're going to get. If you're the Chargers, I would try to trade for guys like Jalen Ramsey and try to get the guys, you know, while they still have uh, something left in the tank and win now. You have so much talent right now. Why not trade for guys that are proven? Yeah, the Titans thing, I'll start with Titans thing because I think it's so interesting because I think it's also 
maybe they did do like a look around and they go Tex, uh Texans are rebuilding and Colts are rebuilding and Jags you're building a year on the way up. And I think the Titans could have looked around going the key to success around the league and the AFC right now is QBs and we don't have one. And we just have a running back and we have no receivers. So it's things that we just don't have that two other teams in our division are going for. So if we don't have that, but we have an insanely good head coach and we have a very good running back who can get assets from, why not trade him? Why not trade our left or defensive players? And why not go, hey, it's okay to suck right now because two other teams in our division are going to suck. It's like it's not like we're just gonna get killed by everyone in division. We, we're not gonna be very good, but we're gonna be able to compete, and we're an attractive place to play because of Mike Rabel. So I like that what they're doing is taking the risk, going, "Hey, let's just reconstructure it now, figure it out." And I think they're gonna do a year turnaround just with how good Rabel is. So I'm excited. For, if I was a Titans fan, I'd be pretty pumped because they're finally doing something. But now with the Chargers, I would go through the drafts just because of how bad their cap is right now. I think last year. They really went for, like, let's remodel it through trade. And I I wouldn't say they did a terrible job. It's just things didn't really go our way. You know, you can't help that Bosa wasn't anything. Didn't live up to who he is. You can't help that J.C. Jackson wasn't even half the player he was in New England. Stuff like that you can't really help. I think now, I've alluded to it before, but I think now is a good chance to go, okay, let's go through the draft. Um, Tommy Boy's not that bad of a drafter. And let's see what young player he can get in there that goes, okay, he's young, he's cheap, and we can build around Herbert. And while we have old guys that, you know, maybe got a couple prime years left on their way out, we can replace them quickly quickly with the new guys that we have that will need to be signed by the time the old guys are out. So I would look through the draft. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I have a man crush on Darnell Washington. That's probably not going to go away in the draft. <laughs> Um, you know, it was interesting that you just dropped the Jalen Ramsey thing, Josh, because the, the Rams are in the market, as they said, to trade Jalen Ramsey. They're, they're fielding offers. Jalen Ramsey going to the Chargers would be a giant upgrade. You know, he, he might not be what he was even two years ago, but he's still one of the top corners in the league. And for this Charger team that is considered to have a, a ton of talent, I mean, the, the high point for the Chargers, it all comes down to Justin Herbert, right? As much as we talk about Austin Eckler, Justin Herbert separates himself from what most quarterbacks in the NFL can do. There aren't too many quarterbacks where you go, that guy, our guy's better than the other team's guy. Can he, can he make it work? But defensively, they, they need a guy like, like Jalen Ramsey, and every team in the NFL does. I mean, if the Rams could afford to keep him and, and still fill holes, they would keep him too. They just can't. Man, I, I, I like the idea that the Chargers are playing for it to win this year, that they aren't in a rebuilding mode. When you're a fan and you know your team's rebuilding, it stinks. The Chargers shouldn't be in that mode in any time during Justin Herbert's prime because why would you waste his, his prime years? Not only that, you've had him on the cheap for a long time. You're looking at the big money that these quarterbacks are talking about. Justin Herbert's going to take a huge chunk of your salary cap in the near future. You know, you can't waste any of these years. It's about um, 15 years, I guess, left that you could say you, we expect Justin Herbert to to not only be a, a premier quarterback, but also for the Chargers to compete because he's in that uniform. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Obviously, Mario, I understand what you're saying. Are you you're thinking Michael Mayer or the tight end from Georgia? You want tight end in the first round? Is that what I'm hearing here? I'm, I'm itching towards a tight end. and I, I would love Michael Mayer. I understand people's obsession over it. I just really don't think he'll be there. I think Green Bay will take him. So I don't think he's going to be there. But if he is there, then let's take Buddy from South Bend. But as we said, cautious on the ND guys. We've said that, and I stand by yep. that, Josh. Cautious on the that. ND guys. Yeah. Soft. Very soft. Uh, it'll be so funny to me, <laughs> so funny to me if the Green Bay Packers draft a premier tight end when Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be there. A total F you <laughs> to Aaron Rodgers on the way out. What, what do you guys think about Aaron Rodgers? Mario, I'll start with you. What's more intriguing to you first, Aaron Rodgers or Lamar Jackson? I go Lamar Jackson right away. And for the simple reason of besides this contract controversy where like I would say almost everyone's on his side. When has he been like an off the field issue? Like, like really, when has he? Was it be when I don't even know? Like, I can't even think of an issue that he's had. He's an MVP. He has gotten screwed by Baltimore and where where's his weapons? They haven't gotten him any receivers for any help. And they just haven't really gotten everything that he's wanted. I like him a lot more, and he matches a play style. 
that is needed right now. You need a QB that can run. You need a QB that can pass. And he can do both. And Aaron Rodgers is a freaking headache. And he's a rental. And he's a one-year rental. And what are you going to get in that one year? When is he going to quit on you? When When is he going to take a little shroomy trip? And suddenly he's gone all week not preparing with preparations. And he's back on Sunday. He's just going to play. Like, what are you going to get out of him? And let's say you sign him for two years. What And that first year... He goes on the Pat McAfee show and goes, well, you know, I don't know what I want to do. You know, maybe maybe you want to live somewhere else. Like, do you want that headache or do you want to have a commitment of, okay, we can commit to Lamar Jackson. Injuries are a little bit concerned, but we can fix that. He will be okay. We'll have him run a little bit less. But he's not the headache. He's not too old. And we know what we're going to get from him. And it's only two first picks that you really have to give up for him, which is completely I think kind of a steal. So I go Lamar. What do you go, Dave? All right. For a couple things. One thing with uh, Aaron Rodgers is I like a motivated Aaron Rodgers, right? When Aaron Rodgers is motivated, he's an MVP player. Aaron Rodgers is almost like too bored, you know, at times where you go, man, it hurts him. If Aaron Rodgers goes to another team, at least you're going to know you're going to have Aaron Rodgers at his best. And I still believe at almost 40 years old, he has another MVP year type season in, in front of him. I think to prove everybody wrong that he could go somewhere else, I still think he could be great. Aaron Rodgers amazes me as a human being that he had a first row seat to watch Brett Favre completely screw this up and completely basically stick it to the city that fell in love with him. And yet Aaron Rodgers, who watched this train wreck, followed up into the same damn thing of threatening to retire nonstop. Do I want to be here fighting with the front office? Just everything over and over again, because in, Green Bay, everybody had, even across the country, people had number four Packer jerseys. Everybody loved Brett Favre. Even if you hated the Packers outside of Mario, if Brett Favre was on TV, you were going to make time to watch him play because he was exciting. He was a gunslinger. Aaron Rodgers was that guy. Josh mentioned on the show last week, you know, he was a kid. He had an Aaron Rodgers jersey. He's never been to Wisconsin in his life. But Aaron Rodgers made it that way where it was cool to wear that number 12 jersey. And then here you go. You look at Aaron Rodgers, and he's doing the same damn thing. And it's just like, man, do you, do you have any idea of, of what you are and, and basically who you're surrounded by? Because whoever's giving you advice is giving you the worst advice ever. Nobody wants to hear, oh, we cannot live our lives without Aaron. You know, Because th- nobody thinks that way. Everyone's going to be fine. The fact that um, the Packers are willing to say, Aaron, you can go. We just had enough of this crap. We just had, we've had it. We're tired of it. The fan base is tired of it. NFL fans are tired of it. I'm tired of it. You you can go ahead and leave. I think if Aaron goes to whatever team, whether it's the Titans, it's the Jets, it's the Raiders, whatever, Dolphins, I think it's going to be great. But at the same time, he he's one of those guys you don't root for. I think for a lot of people, we kind of rooted for Tom Brady, believe it or not. We wanted, excuse me, wanted to see him do well without Belichick. It's kind of crazy, but that's what happened. I don't know what Aaron Rodgers for you as I'm having choking right now, Aaron Rodgers for you um, <laughs> is, uh, is uh, like, I'm trying not to choke and cry at the same time and talk Aaron Rodgers for you, Josh. I mean, again, at one time you were a big fan, you were a quarterback, you wore number 12, the whole deal. A lot of it, I think has to do with what Aaron Rodgers was. I mean, where do you feel, feel about Aaron Rodgers now compared to what you thought about him 10 years ago? Okay, well, Aaron Rodgers to me was like Patrick Mahomes before Patrick Mahomes. He was doing things that we've never seen before. He could throw on the run. He was cool. He wasn't a jerk. And then he turned into a complete jerk. He is the NFL equivalent of Kyrie Irving for me. Just a complete headache. I don't like anything about him. But then at the same time, if he goes to a team that actually has uh, like Devontae Adams, like with the Raiders, or you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle with the Dolphins, he's totally an MVP candidate. So you can't pass that up. He was in the perfect city in Green Bay where the media is not going to crush you and they're going to put up with your crap. Did you pull that crap with the New York Jets? You're done, dude. They're going to kill you from day one. They're not going to put up with it. But at the same time, you're Aaron Rodgers. How If you if you play, people will do whatever you want. Like if, you, if you're a good player, people are going to put up with your crap. It's one of the worst things about sports that you get a pass on everything if your behavior sucks. Aaron Rodgers is interesting, obviously. Lamar Jackson's really interesting. The Baltimore Ravens have not given him a receiver his entire time in Baltimore. I saw that the Ravens haven't had an all-pro receiver since their inception in 1996, I think, or whenever they uh, started, which is insane. How is that even possible? I hope I hope uh, Lamar Jackson leaves the Ravens. I don't know who they think they are. Ray Lewis isn't on the other side of the ball. Ed Reed's not on the other side of the ball. That team absolutely sucks without Lamar Jackson. I hope he goes elsewhere. I'd like to see him with the Jets, to be honest. 
Ooh, I like that one. Well, you you do better with the Jets than Aaron Rodgers would. That that's one hundred percent truthful. Um, I agree. Like I don't. I think the Ravens are like almost calling like the bluff. bluff a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The non exclusive. It's like, oh, you think you deserve this money? Let's see who's gonna offer it. And and with that, let's just say the Atlanta Falcons. How stupid are you being right now? You're really not gonna go all in for Lamar. You're really not. You're not. You're you're are you gonna settle with Des, Desmond Ritter? Have fun. Have fun with that. But the fact that you're not gonna go all in on that is insane to me. I don't know why the commanders haven't made a move yet. The, I'm I'm just a little rattled there hasn't been like sharks in the water yet. Like it's not like he's up for trade and there wasn't a GM coach owner on an airplane to Baltimore right now, like there was for Aaron Rodgers. That part's interesting to me. I wonder why that is. Because that was the first answer I got to me. I was like, why, why aren't there sharks in the water? Why aren't people chomping at the bits for Lamar? Because if I was a fan, I mean, if Bears didn't have fields, I guarantee you half of Chicago would be in Baltimore fighting the Baltimore, I don't know, people going, we're getting Lamar right now. It, it would be like, I don't even know a good reference for it. It'd be like, you know, I'd say it's fighting the British. Like, it'd be coming in for freedom, and we're just taking them out, and we're going, we're bringing this guy back. We're, you know, prison. I don't know, man. They'd be fighting. I'm okay. surprised no one's fighting. Yeah. You know why there is a Bennett? It, it, it reminded me of Spicoli right there. In fact, I was originally about how I explained in history. Um, you know what's funny? <laughs> Here's the deal, guys. Here, 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 honestly, I mean, let's be honest, Mara. You know the answer. Josh, you know the answer. The reason you aren't hearing anything about Lamar Jackson is it's collusion. All right. This is collusion on the owners. They're sitting there trying to sit there with tape over their mouths and their hands in their pockets because they know if they screw this up, it's going to mess things up for the rest of the owners in the league. And this is what the Browns did. The Browns messed up the basically the game. The Browns gave Deshaun Watson a guaranteed contract of you know $230 million. And every owner looked at each other, and I'm sure at the owner's meetings, it came out. What the hell are you doing? We have a salary cap for a reason. We have outs in these salary caps for a reason. When guys sign these major contracts, they're, they're, we can let them go and it doesn't come back to hurt us. And we don't owe them a damn dime. It doesn't matter if their ears fall off their head. We don't have to pay them a damn thing. And these are always outs that benefit the owners. This is an owner's game. It always has been because the Players Association is dumb as dirt. And we've talked about that on this show before. And you have the Browns who's completely screwed it up like it was their first day on the job. And it, Lamar Jackson is a hell of a player. And I'll make the argument Lamar Jackson's a better player than Deshaun Watson. And here's the deal. Deshaun Watson hasn't done anything. Matter of fact, he's been an embarrassment to the community. You know, and, he, and he, a lot of people say Deshaun Watson hasn't paid enough in, in penalties for what he is off the field. Lamar Jackson's done nothing. He's won a Heisman Trophy. He's won an MVP, an unanimous MVP. He's completely had a better career than anybody anticipated when he came into the draft. He's he's younger. He's a guy that deserves this money. If anyone's going to get a guaranteed contract, it's going to be him. And Mario, you said it a second ago. How is it the Washington Commanders aren't the first team in line to go after him? What would hurt the Ravens the most would be Lamar Jackson going to the Commanders because it's a 45-minute drive to go see Lamar Jackson wearing a Washington uniform instead of a Ravens uniform. You got to get that guy out of your area. And the Raiders need him. The Titans need him. The Falcons need him. Almost every team in the league needs him. The whole goddamn NFC South needs him. But nobody has said a word yet about chasing Lamar Jackson. Even though that would turn the franchise around, it's smart business for these owners to go, we can't be the team that jumps up and pays this guy what he's worth because it will put us all in a hole for the rest of their, their NFL ownership because there's going to be the next guy. Guess who else is going to get a guaranteed contract? Justin Herbert. And it's not going to be $230 million. It's going to be $300 million. Guess who the next guy is going to be one? It's just never going to stop. And the Haslam family completely screwed it up. And I guarantee when you walk in those owner meetings, everybody's looking at uh, the Browns ownership group going, man, you F this up for, for almost everybody in here. Like, 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 let's get the bars of soap, put it in a pillowcase and beat the hell out of uh, the Haslam family. <laughs> like th they completely messed it up. But come on. But we all know Lamar Jackson's a stud. He is a stud player. And yet everyone's acting like they never heard of him before all of a sudden. It's collusion, it. man. Right, and if they could prove collusion, collusion, there's a major lawsuit coming. There's a major lawsuit coming. Yeah, I agree with you. Mario, what, what, what do you got next? All right. Do you guys want well, to go on, to Let me ask you real quick, guys. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I want to ask you real quick this question. Because we brought up Aaron Rodgers and we brought up uh, Lamar Jackson. 
either one of those guys goes to the New York Jets, okay? Who who's the biggest sports star in in New York? Is it Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Judge? Is it Lamar Jackson or is it Aaron Judge? Who's the biggest sports star in the city of New York? Probably Evan like Fournier. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll go with the NFL the player over the over the MVP over maybe the best player in all of baseball. I'll go with if Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, becomes if, the biggest star. Whoever the quarterback of the Jets is, if it's Rodgers or Lamar, his biggest star in New York for sure. I, I Dude, yeah, Lamar I, of the I, Jets would be so sick. So sick. So what were you say, Mario? That no, it'd be so sick. And the Jets were like kind of. I'm for the Jets being back. I'm for New York teams all sucking and then being pretty miserable. <laughs> but I'm for the Jets being like pretty back. Um, yeah. I, I would say this, like, if – I know this is cross-sport, but, like, if Brunson, like, willed the next like, the Eastern Conference, I'd say Judge is sitting down at third for, like, most popular, most loved athlete in New York. Like, it would, it would, Brunson would go, go two or one. But, yeah, as soon as either of those guys commit, front page, I mean, they're kissing their ass. They're up in there. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> those New Yorkers are up in there. Yeah. All right. Before you move on to the combine, real quick, give me a prediction. Those two guys, where do they end up? What happens? What what what's what's the future? Do they both leave their team? Do they stay with their teams? I think Lamar's gone. I think he absolutely is gone. I don't know. I, I just don't want him to be on the Ravens. Um, I say Lamar goes to the I Jets. Think, I think the Ravens want him gone. I think the Ravens yeah. want him gone. They want they do. They want the two first round picks, and they they want out of this. Yeah, I'll say Lamar goes to the Jets and Aaron Rodgers goes to the Raiders. Okay, I like how you brought that up. Talk about a team that is so quiet right now. I've mentioned it back to back weeks, but like so quiet is the Raiders. It is so crazy to me. I'm like, how, what the hell is going on? Like, what are you spewing up like over there? Like, they are so quiet. It's either going to lead to a big splash or a little puddle that just means nothing. Like, I don't know what they're going to mm-hmm. do. Like, Jimmy G. But that. That's crazy to me that it's so quiet. Um, That's my prediction. That's my yeah. prediction. Jimmy G is going to be a G. Uh, I think it wouldn't surprise me if Lamar is Washington just because Dan Schneider's on his way out and he just gives one big F you to all the owners and goes, hey, I'll give you fully guaranteed. I'll give you $20 more. <laughs> That's awesome. And he does, and then he walks out and does a Richard Nixon, baby. And he's just peace yeah. out as he's walking out of <laughs> DC, uh, that one, and then dude, that'd be incredible. Aaron, that'd be incredible. Um, and I think Aaron probably, I think he'll end up staying. I think he'll end up staying. Sadly, I don't think Aaron think ever plays for the solid. Packers again. I think I don't think Aaron plays for the Packers again. I had just my feeling. I think I don't know where Aaron ends up. I mean, here's the deal: we just talked about the Titans, you know, revamping and training guys. Any team Aaron Rodgers goes to has to be a competitor this year. In 2023, they have to be. You can't go. You can't go to a rebuilding team. Why would you do that with a 40 year old MVP type quarterback? So, like you know, we mentioned Aaron Rodgers has a home in, in Nashville. That boy, he'd fit that Titan team because Tannehill's, you know, this and that. Well, it looks like the Titans aren't interested in getting him. If Aaron yeah. Rodgers doesn't go to the Jets, doesn't go to the Raiders, I don't know. Does he go to follow Tom Brady and go to Tampa Bay? I have no idea what happens with Aaron Rodgers. I can't pick picture him on another team. I really am rooting for Lamar Jackson, by the way. Just and, and I've never been a Ravens fan or a Louisville fan or anything like that. I just feel like this guy is is getting the shaft. He's he's getting screwed over, and uh, it's it's unfair to him. People want to blame him. He doesn't have an agent, and this and that. He hasn't done anything stupid or embarrassing. So that's why I'm I'm rooting for him. It really bothers me that Deshaun Watson got rewarded for bad behavior, and that's just just the way I look at it. You know, so anyway, the, the, it's it's kind of interesting. By the way, Garoppolo, I think, does end up with with the Raiders. I think I think that's the way it's it, it's going to go. I don't know how Raider fans feel about that. They'd much rather have Aaron Rodgers, but I think it's it's interesting to see. And Aaron Rodgers, if I'm him, wouldn't you want to go to the Raiders with all the talent they have on offense? Yeah, Devontae Adams yeah. right there. Yeah. Waller, I don't know what they have to give up. Josh is my thing. Yeah, Josh Shake. Yeah, yeah, team. Yeah, he's the only guy that when he uh, moves closer to home, it actually doesn't mean anything, you know, if you're Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Yeah. <laughs> He'll need the same number of tickets as he did in Green Bay. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, no kidding. Funny. All right, Mario. All right, so the combine. the combine. It's right there in your back. Right, here's my thing. Here, here's my gripe with the combine, okay? 
do not tell me how high a quarterback jumps. I don't care. Like, what does that mean to me? Or how high a lineman can jump? What does that actually mean? It means nothing. And also, the guy that tore his ACL that did the bench press from USC, dude, he tore yeah. his ACL. It wasn't his his yeah. U, like his like his uh, labrum or something. Like, who yeah. cares, man? I, mean, I, I these combine stories wear me out. Talking about the hardships that they face when they're two years old, dude. Here, here's something: everybody's gone through terrible things. Some people worse than others. I just want to know what kind of football football player they are. Stop giving me these stories with every single guy. It is absolutely. I think it's yeah. disrespectful to the player. First off. Second off, I just want to know what kind of player he is. So that, those are my couple of gripes with the with the combine. What do you got, Mario? Okay, first off, I completely agree with you. Can we stop when these guys have the biggest accomplishment of our life going, okay, now we're going to ask you this question. Mother, father, and like gone, grandmother. Like It's like you're searching for a travel. Like, dude, just yeah. don't make him go through like his emotional trauma. Like, don't interview his therapist. Like, how about we just mm-hmm. celebrate like – what they're doing it's my biggest their biggest pet peeve um and i agree with you look anthony richardson is a hell of an athlete four four uh three 40 yard dash beast okay beast all around did anyone watch him at florida did did anyone or can we can we watch can we watch the tape sucks he sucks he is so <laughs> bad he is so bad he's not a good quarterback i don't care how good of an athlete he is Buddy can't hit a running receiver, okay? Like, he can't. He's not good. That's my biggest pet peeve. It's like, dude, cool. I know a lot of great athletes, okay? I've seen a lot of great athletes. That doesn't mean you're good at a sport. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a good quarterback. Just means, congratulations, you've made it far enough to be a professional athlete. He's not good. If he drafts in the top 10, you're a freaking idiot. He's not good. He's a project and a long project. What I think he should be is a Taysom Hill. You get him on with a good uh, offensive mind head coach, he, he'd be a great Taysom Hill. Are you kidding me? He'd be a beast. But if we're going to sit here and say franchise QB and he's in the same um, conversation as CJ Stroud and Bryce Young, put on a freaking idiot hat because you're an idiot and go back to first grade and relearn <laughs> and do whole schooling because that's what you are. You're an idiot. <laughs> and the fact that his odds have jumped to plus 500 to be the first pick in the draft, numb nuts everywhere. That's my Anthony Richardson rant. Now, let me tell you guys real quick. I'm sorry I'm rambling. But let me tell you real no, quick, Dave. Let me tell you right, real quick. Unless you're guy, darn, yeah, I know. I know. But I, I'm excited. I took my ADHD medicine, so I'm cooking. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you about my best friend and my soulmate. And his name's Darnell Washington out of Georgia. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you about let me tell you about my friend. Largest uh white span. Wingspan. In history of the NFL. Wingspan. I don't know why I said, typed in <laughs> wide span. Ignore that one. Largest wingspan in the history of the NFL at the yeah. NFL Combine. But that's not what I'm focusing on. His short shuttle was amazing. He's not known for his uh, agility, and his size screws him in that. But only two guys were above him in the short shuttle. Jackson Smith, he's 6'1", 200 pounds, receiver. And Julius Bent. Corner from Kansas State, 6'3", also 200 pounds. And boy, that's a lot smaller than Darnell Washington. Give me him, dude. I'm, I'm in love with him. I write him love, lover, love letters. So I know his address. I freaking love this guy. <laughs> okay, Anthony Richardson, I want to go back to him real quick. All right. Todd McShay yesterday had him moving up to number four to the Raiders. So the Raiders are going to move up. They're going to grab him. Now tell me, that doesn't sound like the most Raider thing ever, right? That's exactly what the Raiders would do. Right, they would go ahead and they would take a shot at on on this guy. Look, Richardson threw that one deep ball wearing the shorts and the t shirt that was right on the money. I mean, that's not the NFL, you know. And mm-hmm. through the combines, and I, I'm one of those guys who can't get enough football, so I'll watch all that stuff. I didn't watch any of it this year, and the reason I didn't watch was I'm just done. I'm, I'm I listen to these NFL players tell me all the time, "Hey, I just ran the 40 yard dash. That is the furthest I will ever run again for the rest of my life." Meaning that. Guess what? The furthest you're going to run normally is is maybe ten yards if you're playing the line. It's it, that's it. How quick can you get off the ball? Can you get ten yards? And and that that is a long way even the ten yards. But as as far as running the forty yard dash and and this and that and the jumping ability, all that, there, it depends what position you play on what's important to you. You know what I mean? Like I want to see how high you can jump if you're a receiver, if you're a corner. Otherwise, I, I don't care. 
I want to see you do the shuttle run if you're basically a linebacker or an offensive lineman. I want to see how quick you are in short spaces. But, man, it, you sit there and you you watch all, all this stuff and you go, it, it doesn't always pan out that way. Uh, Anthony Richardson think he should have gone back to Florida. He should have gone back and proven one more year that, hey, you know what, I, I, I can play. Someone got into his head, obviously, and said, hey, man, you're a star right now. He surrounded himself with yes people and gave him bad advice. And he might have a short time in the NFL where – He's just out. Next thing you know, he's Paxton Lynch, and he's out of the game. I disagree. Why would you not come out now? Everybody's on him. Everybody, He knows people are dumb. He knows I suck. My stock is so high right now. If I went back to Florida, I'd suck again. I can get drafted high. <laughs> Does anybody watch – this is – and Mario, Mario said it perfectly. Does anybody watch these football games? Anthony Richardson didn't throw a touchdown to the fourth game of the season. That's actually Ooh. a fact. OK, you're going to compare him to, uh, you know, great athletes at quarterback Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson had 10 games where he ran for over 100 yards. And that was his last season. That wasn't even the season he won the Heisman. Anthony Richardson had two. He had 654 rushing yards. Last time I checked, that's not that great if you're playing 12 games. He had a completion percentage of 54 percent. Not great at math. 50 percent is half. This guy cannot throw. He cannot run. He doesn't even run it that well. What do, you, what do you want? What do you think he's going to do in the NFL? The closest team to an NFL team that he played in college was Georgia. He was awful. He had 11 rushes for 19 yards. He didn't do anything. I can't wait for the Raiders to draft him because of the dumbest freaking franchise. And he's going to suck there just like he did in college. I disagree. I think he should have came out this year like he did, went off at the combine, showed he's a freak athlete, and then sucked. And if anything, be Taysom Hill. Go play another position. He's huge. He's 6'4", 236 pounds. Go be a receiver. He's a freak athlete. And it's also, too, he played in the SEC. That's probably the best film to watch because it's the most NFL guys. You, you, you're seeing him mm-hmm. against NFL guys, and he still sucked. He didn't stand out on the field. He was not a good QB. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, he was just not very good. And, like, the hype is just getting so insane. And Raiders, please do. Davis, please, please draft him. You and McDaniels, muck that up. That's beautiful. Congratulations. Can't wait for it. No, I'm not. I tell you, man, if I, if I was Anthony Richardson, literally, if I was Anthony Richardson, I would spend the next uh, month literally traveling beach to beach, wearing my combine gear, just throwing footballs on the beach and just picking up chicks. I mean, he looks fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Just, hey, use it while you can, because once people actually see you with the helmet and pads on, they're going to realize you stink. <laughs> but right now, the girls aren't going to be smart enough to realize you don't have it. But right now, you, you're a catch. Just go to, go to oh. Malibu, go to Hawaii, go everywhere it's warm. And to start picking up chicks, man. That, that sounds like a pretty good life. You might as well live it for one I, month. Dude, the NFL, so much money goes into the NFL. You're going to draft guys off of how they look when they throw. Zach Wilson got drafted high because he made one good throw in his pro day. It's the dumbest thing of all time. Bryce Young is the opposite of Anthony Richardson. He looks like he wouldn't be an NFL quarterback. But then you turn on the tape and the guy is amazing. You're going to draft Anthony Richardson over Bryce Young? You got you to gotta lose your job if you do that. You're an idiot. I, I can't stand that thing, man. And Darnell Washington will go to back go back to that too. I'd be happy if the Chargers got him. He's huge. He's a freak. Biggest freak in the draft. Why not? The only reason he didn't have better stats than Georgia is because the best college tight end I have ever seen is there right now. And he sat behind him. So that's the only reason his stats don't look great. But Darnell Washington, why not? Six seven tight end for Justin Herbert. I would take that all day. And I'm happy you brought up that point because people are definitely gonna clap back at us being like Washington stats weren't that great. Josh said it, and like we'll say it again. Probably the best tight end, or one of the best tight ends in college football, and probably the best tight end prospect we'll ever see in Bowers was ahead of him, and he still played really well, and he still has crazy potential. And by the way, we're not taking him at top three. We're not taking him top five. So for everyone that's going to say like that, it's no, it's going to be later on in the first round. We'll get him at, and that's because Michael Meyer will also be off the board. It's more logical. It's not saying, oh, let's take this guy top five, and you know not even look at Will Anderson or, you know, any of those guys. Like, no, it's it's called being logical. Try it. Are you surprised if if you guys look at how guys have moved around since the combine and, and we, you know, everybody knows who Will Anderson is. A lot of people compare him to Derek Thomas, you know, the Hall of Famer that played for the Kansas City Chiefs and unfortunately no longer with us. But Will Anderson was was a freak. I mean, honestly, one of the best defensive players I've ever seen in my life. All of a sudden, after the combine, Will Anderson's not a top 15 pick. I mean, does it make any sense at all? I, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, you look for quality players against quality competition and Will Anderson dominated. 
how can he not be a top 15 pick? Can you imagine if a guy like Will Anderson fell to a team like the Chargers? I mean, that, that would be insane. Because a year ago at this time, people thought Will Anderson was the number one pick in the draft. Dude, don't even get me started on why would you? <laughs> I mean, if if Will Anderson's not top three, I I'd, I'd hope to God I imagine this would be the reason because it QBs went one, two, three. He is by far the best defensive player and probably the best player overall in the draft. You can make an argument. Obviously, Jalen Carter, but I think just with everything that's going on around him, that stock's going to go down. Yeah. Will Anderson, I mean, you said it like it's without a doubt. He's, his freshman year was without a doubt. Everyone was saying, like, this guy's NFL ready now. Like, he's incredible talent. He shouldn't drop past three. If he does, then I, I'm i going to guess that the QBs went one, two, three. But that is – that that's a organizational changing talent right there on the defense side of the ball. That is – we got our QB – and we got our pass rusher, one two punch. Are we going to forget that he was supposed to be the number one pick last year, ahead of Aiden Hutchinson and everybody else that was in that draft? Did people forget about that? If you watch any Alabama football games this season, he got the Aaron Donald treatment. He was getting triple teamed on every play. The guy is the biggest freak Alabama has ever had on the defensive side of the ball. You got Derrick Henry on offense, and then you got Will Anderson on defense. He's the best defensive player Nick Saban has ever had at Alabama, and that's saying a whole lot. He had 62 tackles for loss in three years and 34 and a half sacks in three years, and that is getting double and triple teamed his sophomore and junior year the entire time. I don't know how in the hell you could not draft that guy in the top three picks. I am so curious to see how this plays out. If he drops outside the top five, I got to do something for this show. Like I don't, I got to do something ridiculous because <laughs> I get yeah. I'll, I, I'll, more than punching myself in the face because this guy, like I said, is the biggest freak Nick Saban has ever had on defense. He's an immediate day one impact player. I'm gonna say this too: from day one till his retirement, he's gonna be an All Pro player. The guy's gonna make at least eight All Pro teams. He's a freak, dude. I I can't even, you get me fired up on that one big time because everybody knows that watches football. He is the he was the best player in college football the last two seasons, regardless of offense or defense. Would would you not cut your hair until football season, until Chargers first win? Well, how high does he have to get drafted? Uh, below top five. Top if he gets below the top ten, I'll grow out my hair till the first game of the season. <laughs> okay, okay, until Chargers win, they start off over three. Okay. Be a tough one, yeah. Like Dude, that. if he falls yeah. to the no, Chargers I'll, and the Chargers able to get him, I swear to God, I won't cut no. my hair for a year. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Dude, I will. Yeah. If he falls okay. to the Chargers, like, I don't even know what's. That's kind of like. That's worse than Derwin James falling to the Chargers. Yeah. That's actually worse I, than Derwin. Like, that doesn't make any sense. I'll tattoo his, at, his face on my ass. <laughs> swear to God, dude. Dude, I'll tattoo my face on his ass. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> exactly what I would do. Now we're rolling. Oh my, oh my god, dude, that is that's too damn funny. That's too funny. Oh man. So okay, so looking forward to uh, to next week as as we look look at what's going to happen in this quarterback situation. You're hearing more and more again of what you know teams like the Chargers are doing on a national level because of Justin Herbert I don't know if you guys have noticed but when people are talking about the quarterback situation everyone's saying Justin Herbert's next in line as a as a Charger fan as someone who follows this team do you like the fact that Justin Herbert's name is brought up over and over again because he's considered that great across the country or does it make you nervous that man the Chargers are about to have their their hands tied on what they can do financially because they're already in a financial hardship, not having to pay Justin Herbert. Like, do you think the Chargers can figure this out? Yes, and I and you need Justin Herbert. So, I mean, it's like a moot point for me. What yeah. Do you, what do you What do you expect? You know, like you 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 have to have him. So, as long as you have him, you got to figure it out. You got to get that done, and then everybody else you can figure out from there. They can leave, dude. <laughs> like, I'm a Charger fan, but I swear I have no problem letting anybody else go besides Justin Herbert. Joey Bosa can leave. Keenan Allen can leave. They can all leave as long as you have Justin Herbert. Nobody else matters. Superstars attract stars. Justin Herbert's a superstar. He's only going to get more expensive the more you wait. Lock him up now. Yeah, some guys are going to have to walk out the door to save money, 
but more will be coming in because they're going to want to play with Justin Herbert. And the better he plays, the more expensive he gets. Lock him up now. Get the contract signed. Don't have to worry about it later on. It, if you know you have a headache coming on, why wouldn't you take ibuprofen before? Okay. Like, that's <laughs> just you know what I'm saying. Like, that's just going to be a headache for you. Like, just get it done. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm with what you said, though, Josh, right there. Everyone else can leave. I mean, that, that's it. You just look at Justin, and you're like, you and me. That's it. It's, it's, it's you and I just going to figure this out. If you're Telesco, right? You're just going. He, he's he's the guy that's going to be the franchise. If you're buying a Charger jersey, it makes sense. It's the only jersey you're buying is number 10 because he has to be your guy. He has to start and basically finish his career in a Charger uniform because he's that important to the franchise and what they're going to do. Um you know, Tom Telesco will have his hands tied, man, trying to figure out the pieces. And again, maybe he's the right guy, maybe he isn't the right guy. But the Chargers have to figure this out. Um, I hope Staley turns out to be the right guy, because uh, you know, right now you're just wasting years of what people consider a top five quarterback. You're you're wasting years, and you can't get a playoff win is is extremely frustrating. You know, we'll we'll see. We'll come back next week, of course, guys. We got a lot coming up as we move closer and closer to the draft. Maybe it's time for us to also make our our picks again, where we see the Chargers and who they're going to actually pick. As we did this about five six weeks ago, and and see if we stay the same of what we had. Also, at the same time, Mario has uh, had a great idea for an idea for ranking quarterback tiers, and exactly where does Justin Herbert rank? I love this idea. This is a lot of fun. The quarterback game is always fun. But we'll be back next week again. Another Bolt City podcast again for. Josh Palais, Mario Heron. I'm Dave Palais. Again, thanks for listening to the Bolt City Podcast, courtesy of Odyssey.